Welcome back, everybody. And if this is your first time showing up, thank you. Special welcome to you. I'm John Zadar, your host. This is Tuesday, May 24th, and you're watching On Top and Hot. What I do in this show is I basically share my DD on OTC and penny stocks that I find through the day as I'm day trading. Now, today was a unique day, but then we've had a lot of unique days lately. When I say that, I'm being polite. It stunk. The volume on the OTC market is stifling, and the trades are just falling. We're getting less and less trades every day. So we're going to glance at what was happening on the OTC market today, but then we're going to go look at the bigger picture, and we're going to include those penny stocks from the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange exchange. A penny stock is any stock under $5, so it doesn't matter where it is. So I am all ready for you. Let's jump into this. First place we're going is the OTC market. So this is the otcmarkets.com website. Not very glamorous, but it's never outdated. This is updated every single day by the SEC and FINRA. So when you're looking for information for an OTC stock, forget Google. Come on over here and just get it right the first time. If you don't find it here, then go back to Google as a backup. So what we're going to do here is look at the runners, the stocks that we're running today, not just by gains, but by trades. Does no good to have a 200% gain if only one person created that gain. How are you going to make any advantage out of that? So you want a lot of trades. And they've got a page here, current market, right there. Click that, and this will bring you to the most active stocks on the entire OTC market, all 12,285 of them. And since we're here, look at that. We fell today in dollar. Now, in case you don't watch this show often, we monitor this pretty much every day. And $2.1 is what we are all the time. Occasionally, we move. Today, we moved down $1.9 which is a little scary. We only did 6.9 billion shares. A year ago, we were doing over 40 billion. And today, we did 270,000 trades. It's been getting less and less. We were at 340,000 last week, and it just keeps falling. So it is a bit dismal, which is why we can't get all the activity just on the OTC. You've got to include those penny stocks on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange. And they're getting a heck of a lot more love than these OTC stocks. So all the stocks are in this page. It's like cliff notes. It really is a lot of information. All you got to do is drill down to what you want. And we're going to drill down into the advancers. Now, I just don't want stocks over a dollar or just over a nickel. I want them all. Click that all button, then click the more button, and you end up with a nice list like that. Now, this is every stock considered. So this is the top gainers percentage gain at the top for all of them. You have the ticker, the price, percentage gain, how much money they generated today. I don't know who needs that. How many shares they sold. Everybody wants to know that. And then what I consider the important factor, crowd factor right here, the trades. I want to know how many trades the company had that day. The more trades, I figure the more people. The more people, the more price action and the better chance I have of getting some profits. So this is primarily what I look for. Now we're looking for a big number. What do I mean by big number? Well, let me put it this way. Last week, we had stocks here that had over a thousand trades. It is common to have stocks with four, five, eight hundred trades a day. That's very common. We didn't get anything like that today. It was really, really bleak. You can see here, I am starting at the top, 9,000% gains. Pay no mind to those. Those are, the, I'll explain them in another video. Just don't worry about those. The black diamonds are off the market. We can't consider those. So you've got a 51 here for GNCP, but it's a triple zero. I'm not looking at triple zeros. I'm looking for stocks that have sold at least a million shares and have a lot of trades. So I want to see, I don't know, 90, 100. So let's scroll on down here. We're down to 100%, 19, 20, 12 trades. That's all we got. There's 45 for PYBX. Uh, I did look at PYBX just to see why it was moving. I could find no reasons. It just had technicals. People on Twitter were talking about the technicals. And look, it moved. But they did not do a million shares. 67 trades, not a big number, but it was today. They did 18.5 million shares, 75% gains. They're at a good price, 0014 EXMT. Now, EXMT, no news. 
no disclosures. They're at a 52-week low, and that was spoke of on Twitter. Whenever a 52-week low comes along, especially on a cheap stock, they talk about it on Twitter, and you'd be amazed. That's all it takes to get people in on them sometimes. And we'll take a look at that chart as soon as we get over to the charts. Let's continue on down. Uh, 24, 182, 182. Oh, it's a triple zero. Wow. Yeah, okay, we're not going to look at that one, but look how many shares it moved. But it is super super duper cheap do you know that you can buy one million shares at triple zero one for a hundred dollar bill one million shares but you normally have to hold it for a long time so i hope you don't need that hundred dollars 15 goodness gracious folks we're down to 40 percent now okay here's one 378 no look they didn't do a million shares Wow, 378 trades, and all they did was less than a quarter million shares, but it is at $2.50. But that doesn't meet my criteria. I want over a million shares. Oh, my goodness, we're down to 33% here. There's got to be something going on. Look how, see, now this is why you really can't focus in. 209 trades, that's decent. I'll go for that. 14.2 million shares, yes, yes, yes. It's not a triple zero. It is uh, about a half a penny. This is EBML. EBML is also at a 52-week low right now. And I do have something I want to share with you about that. They have right here. This is their website, eBullion. What they do is in real time, they monitor the price of gold around the world. And they offer gold up for sale for mints. And they offer it to 40 different countries, I think it is. And this is their site. I don't think it's up and live yet. It's in beta stage, and it's just about ready to open up. And there seems to be a lot of excitement about this built up. Was there anything else going on with this? Oh, it does have a 100 million float, I believe it was. Yeah, 97 million. And as you can see, the volume on this one jumped from 4 to 14 million. And we're going to take a look at that chart as well. Now we're down to, geez, that's 26%, folks. Honestly, I don't like to really consider anything at the end of the day if it hasn't hit 30% or more. But we'll just go one more page just to see what the numbers show. 54 at a triple zero. 68, ah, there's one, NIHK. Uh, that was a 23% gain today. Did do 2.1 million shares. And there's another triple zero, and now we're down to 20%. Folks, that is light. That is light, light weight. I, I normally see quite a few stocks that have hundreds of trades a day, a few that have thousands of trades a day. Today, we didn't see very much. So what we're going to do is include those penny stocks now. And the way I do that is I jump over to Thinkorswim, and I have a scan. Let's go over there. So let's continue browsing these stocks with the assistance of Thinkorswim, better known as TOS. This is a free trading platform. You get it just for signing up for a free trading account over at TD Ameritrade. You don't have to give them any money. You don't even actually have to trade with them. Shh. Just keep your account open and you can use Thinkorswim absolutely free. So what we're going to do here is a scan. We're going to search all the stocks, not just the OTC. And this is going to cover the NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, American Exchange, and the OTC. Now, we're searching with only one criteria, one filter, last price. And I'm looking for stocks between $001 and $3. Now, $001 is going to get us into the OTC, and $3 will get us into the major markets. Now, I could go up to $5. Sure, those are penny stocks. But I like the action that comes from the stocks in the $3 range. See, when you uplist from the OTC, you've got to meet a $3 requirement. You have to be at least $3, not one penny less. But once you're on the NASDAQ, your price can fall below $3 without getting into any trouble. I mean, you're not happy that you're falling, but the NASDAQ market isn't going to do anything to you. But if you go under a dollar, that's a different story. Now you're in the red zone. You've got a certain amount of time to get that price up over a dollar and has to stay there for 10 days in a row, I believe it is. So there's a lot of activity on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange in the $3 and lower range. So we've got the search listed here, and actually the search is broke down into two pages. I don't know why they do that, but we're going to look at both pages. But don't worry, it's not as many as you'd think it would be. And I've got this set up already. 
I've got it set up so that volume is at the top. We're looking for stocks with at least a million shares sold. And right now we're at 54 million at the top. Doing that helps me a lot. First off, it sorts out all the red. But of course, if we were doing percentage gain, I wouldn't see the red at all either. But what it does really is it singles out the green gainers for me and I can see them very easily. They stand out. And I'm gonna be looking for gainers, let's say, 30%. I mean, you got to have something to impress you. We could go lower, but is that going to impress you? And 30% isn't much, but that's where we'll draw our line. So all we got to do is come down this percentage change, looking for numbers above 30. So we had a gainer here of 5% and one at 3%. They did do a lot of shares, 49 million and 42 million, but they're just not exciting enough to look at. But BTTX, BTTX is, she has got almost 70% gains with 40 million shares sold today. This is Better Therapeutics. Now, if I look like I'm looking over your head, folks, it's because I've got a second monitor behind you and I've got information written about the stocks that were running today. That's really what you want to know, right? Why were they running? Well, BTTX had no news had no disclosures. They did have a lot of tweets today about their technicals. And I'll tell you that will get a stock running. How many people are on Twitter, right? But there was a form put out. I don't know if this makes any difference, but there was a form four put out a couple days ago, I think it was. That is a form the insiders must file whenever they buy or sell common stock of the company. Well, the CFO sold 35,000 shares of the stock just a little bit ago. Ah, but the price went up, right? So we got a big jump right here, crossed over. Now I want to back up. Let's get a four hour view. All right, so she's been coming downhill under the 200 and here recently has been fighting to get over that 200 and is doing it a second time. On that 20 day, one hour view, she got underneath the 200 haul here, which is no big deal. I can't see any reason why she would jump technicals. I guess people really thought this was a good place to be. It's not a low. It's low, but I mean, it's not the low by any means. But after market hours, it touched the 200, which obviously incited a lot of traders. That's kind of an arrow, if you will. You see these wicks point way down deep. That could be an indicator of where it's tending to go. This one, I do believe people were reading it that way. And once the market opened up, it settled here on the 50 and launched off that 50 across that 200 and looks to be holding its gains pretty strongly. Looking at the five day, five minute, she had a big jump. Looks like it was right when the market opened up, what, at four in the morning, something like that. Fell all the way back down to the 200, which she was far under. Yesterday's close, she was way under that, so that's a nice gain. And then this morning at the bell, she took off and has been riding up very quickly. And after market, she is falling. She is down near her 200 haul, almost a 50 day SMA. Could she come down to the 200? Anything is possible, especially since she doesn't have any catalyst. Technicals is why she ran, so people may take their profits and she may come down again. Back to our list over here, we're looking for 30%. There's one, EXMT, 75% gains. Only did 18 million shares, you know, compared to BTTX that did 40 million shares. EXMT, no news. No disclosures. All we got on this one is a 52 week low right there. This is the low bubble that hit just a little bit ago. Let's come on in on that 20 day. Let's see if there's anything to 4C. So you had a low bubble there of eight. She went sideways, fell again. And is she at that low? Yeah, it's the same point. She hit it a second time. The second time she hit it was enough to invigorate her to move. Let's look at that five day, five minute. So she hit the low bubble yesterday again, right? And, and see, this is what you see on the five minute. On the five minute, you are going to see the low bubble here and not back here. That is the one hour. So that low bubble is way back here. And if we go to the four hour, you know, it could be even further back. Not in this case, but that's my point. People are trading on the five day, five minutes. So as soon as they saw that low bubble, they did some investigating and boom, for some reason, it didn't just jump up to the 50. Once it hit the 50, it took off. So yesterday it put itself in position for this morning to run very hard. And she went from a triple zero eight up to 14, so call that eight to 14. 
Nice gain there. Technicals are still very strong, folks. On the five minute, everything is pushing up all in the right direction. Absolutely great. We hit a high bubble. Volume is strong. This looks like it's going to continue running tomorrow. Absolutely does without any catalyst. It just had a low bubble. But how far can a low bubble run? Well, I don't know. What was, uh, let's go, go back and see what we got going here. Well, you could get it to right there, right? That would be 15. And right now we're at 14. That ain't very much more to go. So what is a better setup here? Well, she could get up to there, which is 16. And then there, 18. So she does have strong resistances and supports at each one of those lines. 15, 16, and 18. And if she continues growing, she'll probably sit on those lines and get close to that 200. And if she can get above that, then you're going to get some good growth. So the next stock on our list, right below it, right there at 27%, 14 million shares. This is EBML. EBML was that gold bullion company online that is soon going to be selling gold online. And oh my God, let me get rid of these lines here so we can see what's going on. Obviously, I've been looking at this one. It had a giant fall, folks, after a giant surge. We had a surge back here on the 4th, and I don't have a clue why, but she ran all the way up here. If you constitute this as, uh, call it 14 to 51, without the zeros, 14 to 51. So you're looking at uh, almost 400% gains there. And then the fall is more than 400 that's probably 500 percent drop folks and if i remember correctly this is a 52 week low bubble absolutely is and we can see if i draw a line here which is what i was doing before that is a strong support right there uh let's see another strong support would be about right here this one right there and let's get another one. Is there? Let, let me come down to that four hour. I may get a better view there. Oh, gee whiz, not really. Um, God, well, we got one up there. And I guess there is one right there. All right. So if we look at that on the 20 hour. So here we are in the low bubble. We came down and we're bouncing up. And we're right on top of the 50 right now. Right on top. She could break out, folks. Uh, technicals aren't that strong. They're not that strong. But again, this was a huge jump. Look into the DD. I'm sure you'll find a reason for it. It fell here. People reconsidered and it took off even stronger than its initial jump. So that would be interesting to find out why. It would also be interesting to find out why it fell. I don't see any earnings or anything here. So we could see a recovery. Right now we are at about, call it six, and this would be... 10. So you'd have about 40% uh, gains there. And oh no, it'd be more than that. Yeah, it, it would actually be more than that. And then you go up to 12, that's 100% gains. There's 16, 150, 20. So there's a couple hundred percent gains just going halfway up this thing. Just halfway up. There's another one right there. But if it got all the way up, folks, and I don't know why it went up, you've got a huge 500 plus percent gains here. But down here, just down here, you've got a couple hundred percent that you can probably snag watching the volume. When these technicals turn up and the volume starts growing and it's above that 50, you may want to get on board this puppy for a ride. What else we got over here? Uh, there's 11% for ETEK, 1%. 17% for CLEU. Here's 100%. 100% for CTEK. All right, let's see what this looks like on the four hour. She's had some huge spikes here. Big, gigantic spikes. And that's not even a huge one compared to these over here. It's a big one. I will grant you that. But these are bigger. And you can see underneath each one of those spikes is humongous volume. Technicals are screaming on this right now. Now, I do believe this company had news today. They sure did. Uh, this is uh, Synergist Tech. They entered into a definitive agreement to be acquired by Clearwater in a $17.7 million transaction. And they've only got a float of $10 million. $10 million, so it is a very low float. And they were just acquired. Now, I honestly don't know. I think Clearwater is a company that is public but I'm not sure. They may be a private company, so you'd want to check into that. But it seems to me that everybody is quite excited about this. The news came out. She jumped from uh, 58 cents 
up to $1.20. So you've got 100% gains there, just in that bounce. Then she fell down and climbed right back up, pretty much to her same place. Technicals are strong right now on the four hour. Let's come down to that 20 day, one hour. Man, what can you say? It was straight up all pre-market after market. Now, this is a NASDAQ stock. I do believe it's NASDAQ. It could be the New York Stock Exchange. Um, what do they say? Not to, I'm not quite sure, but I do believe it's a NASDAQ stock. My point here, you can trade this pre-market, after-market hours. You can't do that on most penny stocks. That is to say most brokers won't let you trade them. So I don't have any options to trade OTC, pre-market or after-market, regardless of what it's doing. With penny stocks on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange, you absolutely can. There is no special requirements, no criteria. You can trade like you trade any other stock the same old way. All you gotta remember is before you put in your trade, you've gotta change the time from day, a day trade, to an extended trade. It can be good till cancel, GTC plus extension, day plus extension or just extension. But if you don't have the word extension in there, it'll just ignore your order. So during pre-market, after market, you can make some money. Now, this happened right at the bell's uh, end of the day bell. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Coming down to that five minute, you can see it was maybe five minutes after the bell. We had this huge giant jump here. It just launched. There was nothing more to actually be said. She went sideways until this morning when the day started off again. I do believe that's like four in the morning. Yeah, four in the morning. Four in the morning, they were back at it. Pushed it up a little bit more, but that was all she had to give, folks. She is riding that 50-day. But here we come. You have the 200-day, and it's just turned right there. The 200 haul right there. Now, really, it's not great. There's not gonna be an explosion here. Everything is coming together and planning out. You can see nobody traded this thing. Not like we do, up and down. Everything is going absolutely flat right now. All the lines, the 10, the 20, the 50, the 200, and the 200 haul are all coming together. So I wouldn't expect this to do anything more. I think they found the value for it. Ta-da, it is done. She did 6.5 million shares with that 100% jump. Scrolling down, finding some more, 34.26. No, that's 0 0.34, 0 0.26. 7, 40%, there we go. 40% at 3.2 million shares. This is CSLI. CSLI, um, there was a tweet today. Our status on OTC markets has returned to pink current. Management is currently focused on growth and expansion of our subsidiaries of both. Road Dog and Digital Distro. That's it. I didn't find any more information about this stock. So let's take a look at this chart. Well, how about that? There's a six month low. Is it a yearly low? It is, folks. We got another 52 week low. Do we see something happening here? Most of the stocks running are at 52 week lows. And that's not surprising. That is to say that we're seeing a lot of 52 week lows. The market has been falling across the board. All the markets are falling hard right now. Incredibly so. Even the big boys, Apple, PayPal, Target, they are crumbling right now. So we are gonna see low bubble after low bubble after low bubble, which means a lot of people think it's hit the floor. A lot of people think that's the best deal they're gonna get, and it probably isn't. Probably isn't. A lot of these stocks may fall more. We're in that kind of market. But nevertheless, these low bubbles are causing some excitement, and we are seeing some bounces out of them. Looking at the 20-day, one hour, she hit that low bubble yesterday. Fell again, and it looks like she tagged it again right there and tagged it again right there. Three times she tagged that low. And it wasn't until the third time she tagged it, she took it seriously and launched herself. She was underneath all the SMAs, including the 10, went through them all, including the 200, and is sitting above the 200 on the one hour right now, on the five day, five minute. So there's your drop and your recovery, and there's nothing really special to say. She's holding her gains. She did lose a little bit of them. She fell from 0051 down to 0042. Is she gonna continue running? Well, she went pink, folks. That's a big deal. 
She's not only at a 52 week low, but she went pink, she went current. Now, I don't know if she was pink limited or on the expert market, I'm presuming she was just pink limited. But when you're pink limited, that means you're late filing. And if you're late filing for too long, they yank you off the market and they put you in the expert market. You're not delisted, but you're put into timeout. And if you're invested in it, the only thing they allow you to do is sell your shares. And the prices do drop. When you go to the expert market, I can't tell you why, but the prices get severely low, lower than triple zero one. So who the heck wants to sell? And that's all they'll let you do. Though you are allowed to buy, nobody will actually let you buy. So they're out of that danger zone now. They're pink current, they hit a low bubble. I'm not quite sure if it was the 52 week low bubble or if it was the tweet or if it was both. But in either case, this thing took off. Technicals still look warm. I'm not gonna call them hot, but they do look above temperatures. So this could move some more. There's no telling, she's out of the woods now. People feel better. All right, we got a 7%, a 1%. And what are we down to here? Uh, well, we're down to 2 million, 16, no, 15. Goodness gracious, scrolling, scrolling. Uh-oh, we're almost out of it, folks. We're out of it. That's less than a million shares. Now, there was one other company. Maybe we missed it. Oh, that's right. There's a second page. I told you there was a second page. So let's go over to that second page here and see what we got. I knew there was more because we were out of it. Anything less than a million isn't anything I'm interested in. 8%, 10%, 5%, 42%. -R SPRC. This is Sispark Limited. Boy, they've taken a heavy fall. Can you believe that? 42% gains. Really? Really? Well, I guess that probably isn't taken into consideration the aftermarket. These percentages do not change once the market closes. So she closed at 42%, but she's way down here now, which she fell another 30, 40 cents. 40 cents she fell there, and off of $3, that's something like, uh, Oh, 20%. So what? She's down to 22% gains. So that was not a big deal. And I think, yeah, this is another one of those stocks, 52 week low. She had no news, no catalyst, nothing except that low bubble right there. That is all she had. She had a bounce here and a bounce here. But the volume is really, really super light on this. She did do 15 million today. Let's look at that five day, five minutes. See if she has anything left over. Nope, she is done folks. So that's what a 52 week low bubble got you. It closed yesterday, people saw it. There was a little activity on it this morning and for some reason, maybe tweets on Twitter, boom, she launched. And what time did she hit that high? She hit that high at 10 to 10 folks. Right there she went from, now we're not gonna count the low bubble. We'll count from where the market opened up and fell to. Right there, that's where you would have had a chance. $2.40, she went up to almost $4. So there was a good 65, 75% gains right there in the first 20 minutes. She did hold on to most of them for another half hour, but uh, I would have gotten out here. As I said, when I see a huge runner just take off in the morning, I expect it's gonna fall. I don't expect that thing to stay up in the air. No, I really don't. Some will, absolutely some will. So it's not always gonna work in my favor, but I am out of these trades before 10 in the morning. And if, if this thing starts going crazy like, like this and it's hitting 50, 60, 70, 80% gains, I don't know how high it's gonna go. And if you get greedy, you may lose more than you could have gained. So what I will do is sell on the up rise as it is actually rising i'll see it go up and i'll say oh my god right, right there i'll say oh i gotta start selling and i'll start typing in my order well because i'm on the upside it's actually rising as i'm putting in my order so even though i saw 62 percent when i said oh i gotta sell i gotta sell that's good gains by the time i sell it's up to 110 percent thank you instead of riding all the way up here to the ceiling and having it bounce down and you go, uh oh, I think I should sell. And it bounces even lower. And you could end up losing your gains a heck of a lot faster than you were getting them. It was going up fast, but it came down faster. 
So you get in the habit of taking those gains when they get over a certain percentage, regardless of what's gonna be left on the table. You're gonna put this in your pocket over and over and over again. And that's what's gonna make you money, consistent gains that you take. It's not how much you take, it's how often you take it. Seriously, folks, think about that. All right, let's scoot on down to the next one. If there is a next one, I think there should be one more. We're down to 5 million shares. Oh yes, this is one that's very interesting and I've been waiting to share this one with you. This is QUBT, Quantum Computing. Had a real strong day here, they had news. We'll look at the chart here in just a second, but I wanna show you the news. So this is a NASDAQ stock, it's currently at $1.97 with 25% gains. This is a company that is working with quantum computing. Quantum computers are not like computers like you and I know of. They are, folks, I, ca I can't put it any other way. They're, they're almost science fiction. They have the capability of doing things that just don't jive in our minds. You listen to it and you go, no way, that can't be possible. And this company has found a way for the average person to get involved with uh, quantum computing. Now, we can use the quantum computers they have out there right now. There's one over at uh, uh, California College. There's one over at NASA that Google is much involved with. And we have a right to use them if you understand them. However, they are not computers as you know computers. As a matter of fact, before I say anything else, I want you to take a look at this clip. This is a man talking to a huge group of people about the quantum computer uh, D-Wave. D-Wave is a, a quantum computer that is the size of your fingernail and needs to be kept at zero degrees because it generates so much heat. And he helped create this thing and he tells you a little bit of what its capabilities are and I think you're going to be shocked. There are an enormous number, mind-bogglingly large number, of parallel realities, as real as this one, that have different consistent histories. And this is bizarre, because we don't see those other things. But science has reached the point now where we can build machines that exploit those other worlds. And quantum computers are perhaps the most exciting of all of these that we have within, or almost within our grasp right now. So in a quantum computer, that device can be in this strange situation where these two parallel universes have a nexus, a point in space where they overlap. And when you increase the number of these devices, you, every time you add one of these qubits, you double the number of these parallel universes that you have access to. So the way I think about it is that the shadows of these parallel worlds overlap with ours. And if we're smart enough, we can dive into them and grab their resources and pull them back into ours to make an effect in our world. Now this may sound very odd to you and bizarre, and in fact I am using language that a normal theoretical physicist probably wouldn't use, but this is, what I'm telling you is absolutely correct and in line with the way that these things actually work. I told you it was gonna blow your mind. If you wanna see the video in its entirety, folks, it's right there. Jordy Rose, D-Wave, Quantum Computing, Parallel Universe, and Three Predictions. This came out about six years ago, so it's probably a lot more than he's even talking about there. But in saying that, we are talking about quantum computing, and I know you can't understand it until you hear more about it, but this is gonna do stuff you cannot imagine. You wanna be in a company that is way ahead of the curve, that is on the cusp of new technology, new innovations, this is as far out there as you're gonna get. And the news today brings it closer to the common man. So let's get back to reality here. What was the uh, share volume around the company today? Booming, went from 114,000 to 5.1 million. Huge jump. Share structure, please be low. Yes, we got a low float here. Not super duper low, but it is low. We got about 21 million in the float. Only about 29 million in the outstanding shares. Financials, what do we got over here? Nothing. We got nothing. Now, the zeros mean they're filing. They wouldn't be current if they weren't filing. So they are filing, but there's no money there, which is a bit surprising to me. No money there either. How about their disclosures? Um, 
Well, they just had a file in here, 10Q. I did not look at this. I'm just gonna scroll down to the numbers to see if there's anything new here. Uh, total assets right here, they've got 13 million. 13 million in assets, they had 17 million last year. Uh, total revenue, so they did have some revenues here. Yeah, just this last quarter, it just isn't on the page yet. So they did $31,000, not a lot folks, but they are starting business. All right, that's all I really wanted to see is if they had any numbers in there. And then we come to the news, which is really what it's all about. It's the new piece of news, that's from 2021. We got it down here. Yeah, this was imported. Uh, Quantum Computing tops techs. Quantum Computing announces agreement to acquire Q Photon delivering first commercially available, ready to run, full stack quantum solutions. Check this out with me, wrong page. That's the right page. So this came out today. Quantum Computing, a leader in accessible quantum computing software, today announced that it has entered into a definitive agreement to acquire Q-Photon, a quantum photonics innovation company that has developed a series of quantum photonic systems. The acquisition of Q-Photon extends QCI's offerings to accelerate the accessibility of quantum computing and other powerful technologies into easily deployable solutions today and advances QCI into full-spectrum quantum software and hardware company. Now, here's the difference, folks. You didn't get to see it in that video because I didn't show it to you, but it's there. The Quantum computer itself is as big as your pinky fingernail. That's as big as it is. But they put it into a, a storage thing that has got to be 10 feet wide and 12 feet tall. And they air condition this thing down to zero degrees because it puts off so much bloody heat. Imagine that. So much heat from one little tiny chip that big. This isn't like that. They've gotten around all of that. They tell us here that Q Photon's QPS, including those for artificial intelligence and optimization, operate at room temperature and maintain computational stability in a variety of application environments. These unique approaches eliminate the cost and the complexity required by the hypercooled, tightly controlled environments required by other technology. Q-Photon's QPS is designed to be easily deployed and used at a substantially reduced total cost of ownership relative to competing offerings while providing substantial quantum advantages. A lot of words there, folks. There are quantum computers out there right now. D-Wave is one of the most popular ones. Uh, University of Southern California has one. Uh, NASA has one. And Google is well involved in it. And you can use these. If you want to use them, if you know how to use them, they're open to the public. But it's not an easy task. This is going to make it a heck of a lot easier and more accessible to the common person. Although I can't tell you what in the world you would probably want to do with it. But there is information out there, folks, that is just going to blow your mind what quantum computers can do. They are nothing like regular computers. They are science fiction. Let's go take a look at that chart and see if it looks real. So we had QUBT already up. There is your four-hour, six-month view. She was over the 50 at $8.95. She is at $1.42. Unbelievably low price. And I got to think, folks, honestly, in my opinion, $8.95 is a cheap price for this. What I understand quantum computers to be, psh, this is going to put the CRISPR to shame. That's what I think. So she hit the 200 again, hit a low bubble here, bounced off that low bubble over the 50, came down again, and today she surged and she touched the 200 again. Is she going to get over it? Well, the technicals are strong in the MACD. She's over the signal line and pushing up hard. She is in the fire on the RSI and the CCI is above the green, but it is pushing down right now. 20-day, one-hour view. Whew. Right. She was under the 50. Fought to get over the 50. When she got over it, she celebrated. Vroom, shot above that 200. Caught her senses, fell all the way back down here, and has been going sideways for over a week. And then today, with that news, took off. Got over the 200 and shot way up here to $2.25, starting the day at $1.60. So you got about a 60 cent jump right there. 
Let's look at that five day, five minute. So she was just going sideways, even though as far as I'm concerned, it's a hot stock. I'm gonna look at this stock. I didn't know they had companies out there that are dealing with quantum computers. And now that they've brought it closer to the average person, I, I think it's a start of something new we've just never seen before. So our last two days, we had a little bit of a jump yesterday. Nothing I'd get excited about. No token signs to tell me something was gonna happen. But if I'd have been watching the market, pre-market, aftermarket, and had saw this, I would have saw there was some excitement here. It dropped at the bell. You'd have thought it was a false alarm, and then it just took off, folks. Took off and got up here. This is a long-running one. She didn't stop until almost 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And even after she fell down here to all of her lines, pretty much the 200 hole, she bounced right back up to $2.18, just $0.07 cents below her high. She did fall at the end of the day while everything else was rising. And aftermarket hours, it's a little bewildering, but she looks like she's on the upstroke right now. Technicals do include aftermarket, and they are all warm right now and getting stronger. We've approached the signal line again. You can see what happened the last time she hit that signal line right there. Okay, each time she hits it, she starts to climb. She hit it, she started to climb. When she pushed away from the signal line, she really started to climb. So she is starting to push away right now. We could see another run in this. And if people understand what quantum computing is and what it can do, and I can't even explain it to you folks. I swear to God, I don't feel like a dummy. I, I, I think I'm quite intelligent, but to try to explain this to you, you've got to understand quantum computing. But they can give you some examples of what it can do, and it's just... I'm mind boggled. So I really like this company because it's on the cusp, it's fresh, it's new, and it is the best thing out there. And they have just had news where they acquired a company that's got technology that's going to advance quantum computing far beyond where it is right now. So I am excited. Is there anything else we got going on over here in the list? We are down to 4 million, 23, 15, 15. No, we're not getting any big numbers, nothing over 30%. Goodness gracious, we're down to 1.5 million shares now. You see what, what I'm talking about. There isn't a lot of hot coals on the fire right now. So finding these is difficult. Well, here we've got one. There it is, PYBX, 86% gains, just a little over a half a million. We looked at that one. It was just technicals. They had no news, no disclosures, no nothing. But it ran. It ran after going flat all week. Today, it took off on technicals. Psh, unless there was something to be seen on the hourly chart, I don't see any technicals. My goodness. What makes stocks run? Unbelievable. Well, folks, that's what we got today. We are under a million shares for all the stocks on all the markets between double zero one and $3.00. And you can see most of those today were running on low bubbles. Some had deals, some had a little bit of technicals. Not a whole lot of catalysts though, not a lot going on. So finding the runners is difficult. So I would say get off the OTC market. I'm sorry folks, I love the OTC, but you want some money in your pocket. You need to come over to the NASDAQ, you need to come over to the New York Stock Exchange, Put in your searches for a couple dollars, and believe me, you won't be upset. I know we're used to trading these sub pennies, but when you see your stock go from $1.98 up to $2.70 in 20 minutes, that is a 30% gain, roughly. Uh, you're making money, and that's what counts. And here's a bonus, in case I didn't mention it yet, there's no fee for trading on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. Cost me $7 to get into an OTC, $7 to get out. So I got to make sure I make $14 profit before I even think about getting out. And then I would only be getting out at even. And who wants to do that? So trading on the NASDAQ, you're going to get your volume. You're going to get traders that have money. And you're going to get no transaction fees. Loving it. Hope to see you here again tomorrow. Remember, folks, do your DD. I know it's thin, but it's out there. It's everywhere. And the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.